Just leave Alan and I. Stop and have a coffee for us, man. You did. I got my free one from the Downs. Is that because you're old? Yeah. Or the Downs? That's pretty close. Over 70 years old, you get three months. Where's that? I don't know. I was going to say. Call the meeting to order. Any public comment? No public comment? Okay. Uh, 911 group is here, and they would like to talk to us about the dispatch. Go ahead, George. <laughs> I guess. You get this over with quick. I appreciate it. Um, we had a. Uh, is this all right if I sit down here? Yes. We had a uh, meeting on Friday again, and we discussed some of our uh, going forward to discuss some of our um, thankings on the, uh, an agreement between the county and the 911. <laughs> Is it all right if I hand these out, Lynette? Yeah, I don't know. All right, if you take one and pass it down. This is a kind of a rough draft of some of the notes that we have taken during our study session, our strategic planning meeting. And this is just a rough draft of the agreement that we're looking at. And we've put a lot of time and effort, and every member of the 911 board has put a lot of time and effort in, in getting some of these facts put out to make it to improve the service of 911 and also make make it fiscally uh, sound for both entities I think um, you can see here that going down through this agreement what we've done is we figured out the cost of dispatching services under the sheriff's budget and currently there's five full-time employees and we figured out the cost, and a lot of these, a lot of these facts and figures, or all these facts and figures, were given to us by uh, Don Wiseman's office. So these are definitely <laughs> factual information. Um, the total cost that we were looking at, base, and we base this on an average of, of the current hourly rate of the dispatcher, at fifteen dollars and twenty-four cents an hour. And what we came up with is. With the overtime, with everything, all the benefits, all the sick days, holidays, and all those costs, that the county's portion on that 60-40 split, because it's really hard to determine exactly how much would be a 911 related emergency dispatch services and the other <coughs> um, services for the sheriff's department. But we've put it at a 60-40% split. And that that cost from the county would be $126,000. We believe we could do it for the county. Currently, I believe in the, in the budget. And Jeff, you have to if you look at that. I didn't have the current current year's budget. Had last year's budget, but I think that's a significant savings for the sheriff's department there. And also, it'll, I believe, or we all believe, that it'll improve the service. And it will make it a little bit more organized in your chain of command. And some of the other things, the highlights that we put in here is uh, we talked a little bit about this before when we met is uh, security of the dispatch center. We have to fill out a report uh, and, and file it with the Illinois Commerce Commission of the standards and regulations of the security of the dispatch center, along with obviously the jail. So we have to have our own standards also. Um, the dispatchers would be the Edgar County uh, employees of the Edgar County Emergency Telephone Systems Board, which is us, the 911. And the director of the, of the Emergency Telephone System Board will make all personnel decisions regarding said employees. Um, we, the Sheriff's Department and the dispatchers do a lot with the running a license plates, lead certification, which is a lot of law enforcement stuff there in the training. And it, all those and those non uh, 911 related training I think would still continue to be the responsibility it will still continue to be the responsibility of the sheriff and it would be in the best interest of the sheriff to, to be in charge of those training um, we would leave the dispatch center currently where it is in the jail 
Uh, we wouldn't have to move anything. We wouldn't have to reorganize all that stuff. And uh, we've also added in there that addition where we had that addition on back in <coughs> wherever with that current lease agreement. That was added on for all the servers, all the phone lines coming in, electrical, all that stuff for the dispatch. And we'd still like to, we would still have to maintain control of that for that reason because that's that's what our nuts and bolts of our 911 dispatch. So we've added that in with this agreement. Um, and of course, we added in the generator cost too. You know, we've we've talked about that before. You know, the generator is a benefit to both us mm -hmm. and the jail, and we can obviously, you know, agree to split those costs on that generator. <laughs> it is very important to have that up and running for the safety and of the and the security of the jail. But basically, that's all that's in this agreement. We wanted to get this in your hands, and. Um, this is obviously not a, a legal document. This is just a rough draft of an agreement that we would like to, uh, for everybody here on the board to consider, to discuss, uh, and then we continue to make a plan going forward. So we we would like to get the uh, state's attorney involved, his office to to sign or make up a legal document, and we can just call it an agreement or whatever he decides that he wants to call it be kind of an intergovernmental mutual aid. I don't know exactly what the legal term is, for I'm not a lawyer. Is there any questions regarding this agreement or how we came up with any of those facts and figures? Or? To be honest with you, Troy, first time looking at this, I would hesitate to make any comment on it. Okay. You know, so, you know honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's probably all there. I just. We need to put. The, I'm just looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, Jeff. We need to put the pencil to the paper too. Right. You know, right. we just. We appreciate it. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, this you've is set out. I do too. I like this. And from a budget standpoint, we've already been moving in this direction, trying to figure out how best to approach it. So. Is there anything else that you would like from us? I mean, as far as details or anything, I mean, would it? We've tried to be pretty diligent on our facts and our figures. You know, like I said, we've we've got that from the treasurer, and and, and I'm, can can you share the worksheet? Did Don give it to you verbally, or did he give you a worksheet on it? Well, he he gave us uh, the worksheet, the spreadsheets, and uh, we can definitely come up with some of that if that's what you'd like to see for each employee well, he and probably what? kept it. I mean we've got it on each employee. I was just wanting to know how much we figured for overtime and you know there's all those things. The information yeah. that Don gave him, I I've seen it at one time. I don't know that I did you send it to me once? Okay. I might have it at home, but it was it was over two hundred thousand and it had like this past year. Right. It's, how much in overtime, how much part time, that type of that's stuff. That's what I figured because yeah. they it, you uh, you take the 126 and divide that by 60 percent. That comes up to 210 thousand. Oh, yeah. that's that's, that's the figure that yeah. they right. come up with. So I figured that. Right. And right. It's just right. if Don gave it to you, I'm sure it's yes. it's solid. <clears throat> and I worked on it last night, based and I come up with a little bit higher. Of course, you know, one year might be different than the other, but you know, that's a ballpark figure. Sure. So you know, it would be a a savings for us. Sure. And, so. And there, there would be at this time. I mean, we, we're talking that you know the county's employee handbook. You know, as far as their benefits and their, and there would be no changes in that whatsoever. Um, we would obviously we would work to have the best uh, workplace. You know that we could for those employees. We would we would do everything we can in our in our capital budgets that we could to improve their workplace. Um, we, we have done due diligence on figuring out their overtime and stuff, but keep in mind, too, that this would be something that, I mean, as a county board, obviously you're looking at the savings and the day-to-day -day operations would be, you know, kind of up to us if we enter into this. And if we go over because of overtime or we have a figure, well, the only thing that you really would be liable for would be that, that figure that we give you, and then we would have to absorb whatever cost. But we also keep in mind, too, that this would be the first year so we could be off a little bit, but I think there's some unique opportunities that we have by by uh, contracting this these type of services to, to have some cost savings, whereas we don't see that opportunity right now with the current situation. 
But we do have the you know the, the main reason is or one of the main the main reason is the the service to our citizens. You know, and we continue to have some some issues with service, and we're continuing to to work on those issues to the best of our abilities. <laughs> I attract dogs. I know. <laughs> well, that's, uh, never had a visitor. No, right. a canine visitor. I guess that puts, a new, puts a new Wait definition of watchdogs there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is he with you, John? <laughs> I think something I, happened to Kirk. I think it's a grudge dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's extra money oh, there. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We, we don't have them, John. <laughs> and they're they're talking a one year agreement right now, right now. So I think they just wanted to present this to the board uh, for us to take a look at, and uh, in the near future get back together and have further discussions and see. If we have questions, who do do we address them to? I would say that I would be a good contact for those questions, and I'll seek the people on the board that has a lot of the. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I have all the answers because it's a joint agreement with uh, we have people that do a lot of the financing and all that. But I will get through, I will get you the answers if you want to contact myself or Nanette's. You know, obviously available every day. She's the director, and she was very instrumental in all this information, and we appreciate all of her hard work that she's done for us. So she is her office is also open during normal business hours, and she would be a good contact also for everybody that's here. I mean, I think everybody really knows what my full-time job and occupation is and where I'm at, so, but then that might be a, a good contact also for that. But, you know, as far as our next meeting dates and stuff, I think that would be fine with that and communicate that information to us, but uh, we would definitely like to continue moving forward and try to, you know, progress this way. It's still fresh in our minds and our facts and figures are good. But I think it's a win-win for, for all parties involved taxpayers, users, and and uh, and the interest holders in the county board as well as the 911 board. That's your next meeting. Okay, the next 911 meeting is October 6th and our next study station is October 6th that morning. So hopefully we have get together, you know, either then or prior to that. I don't know how things go. Any more questions? Anybody? Carl, would you like for me to get a copy of this to the state's attorney for convenience, or does somebody else want to do no, this? Look at first before we do How do you want to do that? Uh, there's no need to go to the state's attorney right now. Until okay. Because kind of, okay. there's more things obviously yeah. have to be added to this, right. but this is the general. Okay. Yeah, if we could, if we could come back maybe to the next study session on October 6th, and then we have a meeting that afternoon. I think that that would be a great time for all parties involved to be to have that good communication too. Yeah, also, that's time to work on before then. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for getting us on there early too. Okay. Appreciate it. <sighs> See you later. Yeah. Take care. Committee reports, Mr. Bringer. Uh, I think they've started on the roof at the every county health department. Popped again after the other day. Took a while to get it started, so I think he's working on it. I have talked to Randy about the window out at the uh, Crackman building. <coughs> I suppose dropped by the uh, bids this morning. Not really bids because I don't think anyone else probably bid on it, but. He's given us a cost for the replace, replace of glass, also a cost for just putting a panel in. So I should have that sometime this morning. I uh, haven't been to animal shelter for about a week, but I talked to Dr. Fry and the, she works at the hospital, so we stopped in the hall and spent about 15 minutes talking about the animal shelter, and she's very happy with what's going on out there, and says, she always tells me Andrew's doing a great job. So. Other than that, uh, we get the, uh, I think, uh, according to the uh, committee's uh, English is in charge of the building, and so if you want me to, I'll just kind of, especially for Craigman building, I'll take over and do that. And also I talked to Bob Wilson about the other problem out there. He does have the material. 
and when he gets time, he's going to start on. I told him I would help him. To material for the other stuff inside. Other stuff inside. Oh, yes. So I got you. Get acquainted. Yep. yep. So whenever he's ready, I told him I'd help him. So the camera's out there. Oh, uh, yeah, not yet. Still well, working on that. Well, they've started, haven't they? They've got the conduit. Yeah. Bob's got. Camera. Bob's got what needs to be done, right. so now we're waiting on Ross. Ross. I've talked to him twice. And well, he was supposed to be out there two weekends ago. I know. I've got to talk to him again. Okay. Well, I will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, other than that, everything's going good. Okay. Mr. Zuber. Uh, uh, basically, as far as claims and stuff coming up, we have a few items we may have to worry about. We usually wait until those things hit us and, and try to deal with them. As far as insurance, so we've got all the information, I believe, at least to the office holders and department heads, don't we? All? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's, you know, there's always going to be some confusion and questions on that. I think we have it set up for the any any employee to be able to call Augie's office and your Billy Ann or Kirk Good, who's our representative, and try to try to figure that out. But they'll always be, you know, we we've, we've offered now instead of basically. The, the four plans plus the not, the five plans, including one not taking insurance. Now we've offered five plans plus the plan of not taking insurance. So um, it's, that always causes excitement until everybody gets a chance, hopefully, to look at everything. And, and uh, my, the one reason we try to offer that many is everybody in insurance is at different stages and phases in their life. And hopefully, that will give everybody a, a different chance to look at it. And so, um, I'm always reminded in insurance, sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like one of those things, uh, what's always equal is not fair, and what's always fair is not equal. And that's kind of the way I look at the insurance testing, because it's just yourself. Somebody else may not think it's great for you, or for them, but it's great for you, and vice versa. So, Long story there, Carl, I'm done. <laughs> Are you going to step off to see Don today? Yeah, I already talked with him. Okay, because I just yeah. left there. Yeah. Okay, all right. Were they going to set up a meeting, like a meeting for people to come in for Kirk to talk with them, or was it going to go around to the offices? Or? Well, let me answer that a little bit longer than just yes or no. <laughs> Last year, we offered, we did set up uh, scheduled times for Kirk to meet with department heads, and he was at various places at various times. Nobody showed up. So what we've done this year in our in the memo to the department heads, we ask them to let us know if they would like to schedule a meeting with Kirk, and he would be more than happy to make himself available. So, at this point in time, nobody has indicated okay. a need to. Can we? Uh, and I appreciate that. Can we still have Kirk set aside one time? Sure. And maybe even. Um, that, that way, if he catches them all, but if nothing else, and not everybody likes this, but say like at uh, 4.15 or 4.30, someday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yep. next week and say, hey, if something just happens to come up, Kirk is going to be available at okay. courthouse or wherever for, for one day just as a catch-all. Yep. And then if nobody shows up, in my mind, that's fine, because you've also given everybody and last chance, and yeah. even maybe they didn't want to talk to their department head or they missed the communication. <laughs> but if there's a way that we could get that to all employees, yes, sir. all employees, not even uh, just through department heads, but do, we have a listing that we can get to all employees, yes. right? If you could yeah. send that out to them, then okay. myself, I'd feel a little bit better that I know everybody. And they all got the other day and they can't yeah. come back and say, well, we didn't. Well, or, or even like sometimes miss up in communications. We right. all have it happen. Right. And uh, that way there's, if we have a way that we can hit them all, yep. uh, then, then if they have it, that's all you for telling me about the other part, though. Cause yeah, well, this way, thanks for bringing shot. that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. Jeff. Yes. Uh, budget and levy. Uh, the budget committee met. A week ago, was it last week? I lose track of time. Anyway, yep. I did was able to uh, meet with the sheriff on Friday uh, and go over his budget, and he understands where we were at. We added here, subtracted there. He is still going to be available not this week, but next week 
for us to meet with him mm -hmm. because I said that was important. Uh, he said if you have concerns about any particular portion of the budget or questions, if, if you'd be good enough to text him or email him, he would be happy to, to either get back to you or think about what right. you're saying right. so that it, because he's only going to be in the office for a couple hours a day mm -hmm. next week. Okay, so, but he understands that we've got to get together on right. it. I think we're pretty good shape on the rest of the budget, and, but I think we need to review it. We need to hammer out <coughs> the levy at this next meeting, and so I'm asking both of you, you, when, what works, and I know there's no good time right now, but we've got to try to, to look at it next week early, yeah. if we can. Is that a problem yeah, for you? I'm going for the first, first part of next week. I don't think I have two other places. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up for sure and double check when I think. And then we can, you know, I've got to get you the rough draft, the new, the 19th update. So, but uh, it's still around where we thought it would be. Uh, the other thing is airport. Uh, last Thursday or Friday, Friday uh, at afternoon, uh, Dale in, uh, Barkley called and said that he had received a communication from Malachnik. And the feds have advised them that they would like us to clean up our ap application. Uh, so I got with, well, first of all, I called Carl and I called Ben and, and then we sent out everything to everybody. So they would like uh, us to deal with that. Uh, I called the advisory board, and Joe is taking the lead along with Barrett, Jake, uh, and Barkley in contacting Worley's, uh, our engineering firm, and they're gonna be heading up getting everything nailed down and making sure with Worley what, what we're supposed to be doing and not doing and so forth, so that we can get our application resubmitted and adjust it to meet what the FAA wants to have done. Which would have been nice if I could editorialize when we went to them three or four months ago. We might have saved all of this. But be that as it may, uh, thank God we have the uh, advisory board and we're in a good position to, to take care of things and, and they're more than willing to do it. So if anybody, do you have any questions about that? Certainly. They moving somewhat quickly on that. I mean, they're working on it. Well, and they've got a date. Uh, what is it? October twenty sixth. That we we need to have some of that in because that's when there's a a meeting. Mm -hmm. in, right. Okay. All right. So. And our next advisory board meeting is that the that first Monday. That'd be the first Monday or second Monday. Second Monday. Second Monday just before our board meeting. That's the seventeenth. There's the meeting. October 17th with the... Uh, yeah, okay, meeting. October 17th, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you were saying, we're, we meet with, uh, the advisory board meets on the 13th. Okay. And they knew it was a holiday, but they're going to go ahead and meet anyway. Okay? okay? All right. How about the uh, cracks on the runway? They're, they're runway? working on that. Okay. Okay, that's a, that's a Joe project. Okay. And I haven't, with this other thing, I hadn't asked him. Okay? okay. That's one. Anybody else have anything? Yep. Just a little bit on, on 911. Yep. I don't know if you've had a chance to look over this. You're a 911 guy. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. uh, I just got this this today. morning, so I, okay. I basically know what's in it. Yes. So I was just, I mean, what, what are, is your question? What's, I, guess, I guess I'm saying I don't know anything about it. I mean, so I'm just curious what, uh, are, are there questions that we, we just need to look over this, do you feel? Is that what you're saying? And then before our next study session or at our next study session or? Well, I think the, probably when the finance. finance committee gets together, we need to take a look at these figures. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've already roughly, I know what the total cost to the county is currently. For, or currently, yeah. you know, I mean, pretty Yearly. close. Yeah. The annual costs, and uh, you know, we've got to take a look at what they're saying that they will charge us to do it and see how much actual savings we are going to 
chain. And you have to remember we're getting thirty roughly twenty eight right. to thirty two thousand from them anyway right. every year. Yeah, I, well, well that's I, I didn't know that's what I was I didn't know what it was and that's why I was almost well, we didn't ask look the, the confusion, but I wanted well, to do it during committee so we right. have a chance to But yeah, the the current cost total cost is around two hundred and twenty thousand <clears> and then you get that twenty five to thirty thousand that they're reimbursing. So you take that off. So it gets down to about a hundred. This this is ballpark figures, one hundred ninety-five thousand. And then, if we enter into this agreement, our only cost will be the one hundred twenty-six thousand that they're proposing. So potentially, there's a seventy thousand dollar savings. Okay. You know, ballpark. Right. And that's I guess that was kind of my question. That's right. what I was looking at it very superficially. Right. right. And I just didn't know how yeah. all the other numbers involved. But we'll go in when we have our committee meeting, we'll get into detail on it and maybe we need to talk with Don prior to that and uh, get that sheet that right. they got. I don't have it with me. And uh, see if this is something we want to do. And we need to manage the savings if there is. And right. we need to put in the first year I've got a mechanism that I'd like to go over that we can put it in to kind of manage what we're doing with it without turning it over, quite frankly, total, total, uh, to the sheriff and not whoever that is. Right. Okay? Right. We've got to manage it the first year so we do, right. in fact, wind up where we want to be. Well, I know we talked about money part. Is there any other thing that would <coughs> need to be put in an agreement like who's in charge of the dispatchers? Who controls the dispatchers? Who has the authority over the dispatchers? Is that well, I, and the sheriff together? Or is that something that would have to be stated? Well, it's finance? somewhat stated in here currently that they're going to be all the 911 employees, and the director Nanette okay. will be in charge of them. She'll have total control of them. Okay. But That's yeah, we fun. we talked with the sheriff. Right. You know, we've had yeah. conversations with the sheriff and. You know, he's, I think he's agreeable okay. to it. And what they want from the sheriff is a protocol <laughs> to exactly know how he wants everything done. Because, you know, they're not just answering 911 right. calls. I, you I, know, I they've got right. the dispatch right. to the deputies. They've got to run things now in the people jail. Come in the business, stuff like that. Right. So mm -hmm. he's going to have to set a protocol down that right. is exactly how I want it done. And okay. that's what they're to follow. Okay. And if he has a problem with it, then he goes to her okay. and says, this isn't being done. I want this done. I just wonder. Yeah, you know, that would be a mechanism to adjust that protocol or change right. it as need be. It would be a flexible deal. Right. right. But then they would have guidelines on how they were to hand answer it and to maintain control of, of what was going on. Yeah. There's, you know, there's other <laughs> little things that have to be done. Well, I mean, that protocol too, thing is a big thing. Right, that's what I was wondering. Because, you know, that was something I expressed all along, mm -hmm. that, you know, me being a former sheriff, you know, I want to make sure things mm -hmm. are being done the way I want it done in my jail. Right. Uh, and Tuesday is the best day for you, mm -hmm. like a Tuesday morning, maybe next week. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll... Yeah. Anyway. Well, uh, morning's not bad anyway. Uh, oh, any morning? Okay. Except <laughs> Thursday, I've got... Okay, except Thursday. Okay. And Friday. Well, I don't know anything about that. Okay, so anything else? Uh, that's about it. Tuesday's always the best. Yeah, we're going to have to, Al, we're going to have to look at the finances and see how that works. But this gives me a rough, I, that's what I thought the implication was, but I just didn't know for sure if that's what it was. And then also I think it's important to look at personnel and how they may change and may not change too on that. And, uh, and even as we get halfway close, I do think we need to have Mark involved in that. Don't oh, yes. Have another? Okay. Yes, that's... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the other thing item. the yeah. sheriff uh, did send us, and uh, we went... Did, Go ahead. Okay. The sheriff sent out a... Had, uh, one of the deputies bring me this last Wednesday or Thursday, and then I got it out to you folks. And that's a prisoner confinement agreement with... Uh, Coles County, and basically it lays out who's responsible for what, holds everybody uh, either liable or harmless for, from certain things that happen. At any rate, I talked to the sheriff about why this came about on Friday, and the sheriff uh, said because of possible problems 
with jailers that he wanted to have something in effect in case something happened and, and he would lose a jailer or two. And in that particular case, that would cause problems that if we, we only have five jailers, and if you lost one or two, the part-time are not going to, so he wanted There's to have... four full-time people. Is there four? There's the, four. I'm sorry, four full-time jailers. Right. So and then yeah, the part-time one, two, it would... Yeah, so he wanted to have something in right. place for three months, that's a three-month agreement, that would uh, knock out what they're trying to do, and so he wouldn't have to run around. He wanted to make sure that we had it, so we could comment, and that he would like any comments that you folks had. Now, is that in effect now? Or is it, uh, it has not been signed. Okay. So, do we have agreement with any other counties around? I don't know if on that committee, and Jeff, you or two, from no. Canadian, or two, I guess. All three of you guys. Yeah. Do, do we have any other, uh, just in case, agreements with any of our other counties around? Does anybody know? I don't know that we have ever had formal agreements with counties. You know, you just, if you need prisoner, someone to take a prisoner, you call Coast County and say, hey, can you handle a couple of ladies? Or same with Clark County or wherever. That's how it's always been done. And they just... And when we had the juvenile, I mean, oh, they went up to Danville. I mean, that was, that was informal. Yeah. No, this gives us just a formal thing to hang our hat on for a few months. Is this something, though, that... Yeah, okay, for a few months. Is this yeah, something we need to look at? Any days. Right. Is this something, we do, though, that maybe that we need to talk with, with the sheriff about? Well, I think uh, it should be passed through. Well, I mean, so that, again, we're going to go back to finances here, to where they're not, uh, this this is fine for 90 days. I'm not concerned about that, if that's what it is. If it's the type of thing where we're looking on a mutual arrangement issue, just in case we ever get to a point where we have too many overcrowding, <coughs> can we work, or is this the good time also to start looking at Clark, Cumberland, Coles, whoever, Vermillion, to see how much it would cost to put prisoners in their jail? I think he already has that. He's called around. But, I mean, he can answer that when we get together. You mean on a permanent basis? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, this was an issue that we had brought up like a year ago on cost and the number of prisoners in the jail and the need either for more employees or not more employees. And, you know, whether or not uh, using part of the jail, not using part of the jail. I just don't want to be reactionary. I'd like to be a little bit proactive on this if somebody comes down all of a sudden and says, you have too many prisoners in there. So you think we're, we'd be all right just doing it temporarily regardless. And I thought we also talked about it one time if we had actually had to house prisoners someplace and only had, you know, like our long-term people that aren't going to be going back and forth to court or whatever. Well, I have obviously I haven't read this. I just saw oh, it. But you guys said this is, I, as I read we this, said I got it. Was yeah. no way and I thought it was like a tomorrow. nine, yeah, I thought it was just like a, it is. That's all. It yeah. Is, so is until I think he's in case there's an emergency comes up here in the near future mm -hmm. that he's going to have to shut the jail down. Because if you only got two jailers, right. you can't even have any prisoners. Exactly. Right. And this is just you know this could get awful pricey. <laughs> yeah, and that's I guess that's the other. You know, when you have thirty prisoners. Yeah, forty-five dollars. I think it's twenty-seven average right now, but at thirty-five. That's three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars a year, and and I guess that also was my thought. I would hope that it would be on a temporary basis, but is this also a time to look at looking at arrangements with other counties to where they are more of the extended stay plan? Yeah, you know, like the, they can't take them all in one jail either. I mean, if you've got thirty guys move out. I think this is a discussion we've got to have with the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that, I guess that's what I'm asking yeah. on the sheriff's committee. Is that a thing that somebody could ask him? I mean, yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean for it to get than this blown out. I think we understand just, why it came up at this particular time, right? Right. Yeah. I, there's a like, yeah. I'm, I kind of thought that when you told me about it, I thought maybe that was then when you told me that, I, I understand totally yeah. what he's He just doing wants there. to have a safety valve right. there that we've already got something in place and we're not running around. Like you're talking about, if the Department of Corrections should come in and go, look, guys, we got to do something different here. Right. Mm -hmm. we got to have a plan B. And I just assume if we had this talked ahead of time with somebody and they're giving mm -hmm. us 25, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to somebody else giving us 
35 because all of a sudden ten dollars a day times mm -hmm. da, 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 da. i think that you're gonna find that's pretty most reasonable. of them yes that most of them higher well, than that. yeah the reason but, i said that is because okay that's okay yeah. we'll we'll talk with him yeah yeah and we can discuss that at finance too right when we, so we don't next, have to was it next week we're going to maybe get with him yeah Oh well, yes, next yeah. week, okay. and we yeah. can try to dovetail that in with uh, Maybe with our meeting. After that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah. With everything else going on, it's just we need one more thing, sure. Alan. Huh? We need one more thing. I think I, I have one. Could I? Are we down the possible? Oh no, down the clerk. You have anything? <laughs> well, I do have one or two things. Okay. Um, Ned Jennison brought in a packet for Ben, and of course Ben's not here today, and it's regarding a program called <coughs> Looking for Lincoln. And each county, there's a, a coalition of counties throughout all of East Central Illinois where Lincoln would have made the circuit. And all they're asking for is a letter of support to get involved with looking for Lincoln and they have a sample resolution. There's no cost involved. Uh, it's more of a public uh, awareness of the history of Lincoln in our county and other counties in East Central Illinois. Um, I haven't read through the, the booklet, um, but obviously there's been some thought behind it because of the amount of paperwork they have here and they've given us a sample resolution and again they're just asking for a letter of support to be a part of looking for Lincoln and what that's going to get us I don't know other than PR um, so I'm I just want to mention that to you and I will get this to Ben whenever I see him next and so you may or may not see that on the next agenda for board meeting um, the other thing that I have is we we Wednesday is the deadline for the party to come up with a name to replace Dale on the ballot, and uh, I, I just mentioned that to you. I, I don't have any anything official yet, so if and when I do, I certainly will let you all know. And then we'll just go from there. Does anybody know if the Republican Party has got a meeting scheduled, what their plans are? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tomorrow. So far. They're having a meeting to discuss this or come up with a candidate? They go by past experience. They probably only let a committee in there instead of opening up for the general for the general. Uh, Republicans to go observe what's going on, you know. So if they have a meeting Tuesday, and when's the day they have deadlines for them to give you a name? Wednesday, 4 o'clock. Okay. So maybe you'll get a call Wednesday morning. Well, I'm hoping so. <laughs> One way or the other, <laughs> yeah. just so we know. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then I know in the letter that you sent out or something the other day, you were suggesting maybe by the end of the week we have a special meeting to name this person? That would be my suggestion. Uh, or as soon as we could get together, just so we can put it out there, keep it open, and deal with it, and then move on. That That's what I would suggest. Okay. Well, and, and I ran it past Mark. He thought it was a good idea, too. Okay. So you'll be in contact with Ben after when you get this information and I guess you're going to have to make sure you get the information before we schedule a meeting. Exactly. So exactly. you'll coordinate it with Ben. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. Yep. I have a question. If they recommend the person, do we vote on the person, the board? Two things. <clears throat> yeah. The, the party will recommend to the county board a person to fill out the remainder of the term. Okay. That's the what we've been calling the two-month person. Okay which 
may or may not be the same person okay, that's what I was to, to go on to the ballot for a four-year term. Okay. Now, it ideally, it should be. It, it'd be nice if it were the same person, but it technically does not have to be the same person. Okay. One other question. We have six board members. What happens if you have a tie? Three want the person, three don't. Well, well did I say we go in the back room with cigars and smoke <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I just, I'm just asking because there are scenarios that could come up, right? Uh, sure, it could come up. Well, the chairman but, gives the name of the board. He doesn't have to go with what the Republican Party right. tells him. Okay. The chairman will, but it still could be three three. I'm not I'm saying it still could be three, three. three. Basically, name a person, and we, the board votes right. to whether to accept it or not. That's, that's right. right. The chairman might name me. I don't know. He was he talking about that. Yeah, that was going. That's going to happen. He was talking about that just last week. He mentioned your name. Carl, <laughs> <laughs> I did remember one other thing. Oh, are you? Are you done? Go get your whole um, <laughs> I Just to let you know, I uh, was re in required by law. Was required by law. Friday to send out military ballots, military and overseas voters. Um, those went out. Uh, we've had some email issues in the network, at, up, at, you know, uptown. But uh, I think those are resolved now. Uh, military ballots did go out. So. Uh, so whose name is on the military ballot? Dale English. Is his name still on that ballot that you send out? Well, that would only be to. No, we only had one request of military ballot okay. in that district, and okay. that ballot was uh, his name's been removed from the ballot. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. And in this case, uh, I can do one of two things. Once I find out who the replacement's going to be, I can send that person another ballot, but it's going to be an uncontested race anyway. Right. So, but it, at least I, you know, I can send them another ballot. Absolutely. I'll make contact with that person <coughs> and let them know, once I know who the candidate is, okay. if they would like a, a, a ballot, they can certainly have one, and then we will uh, void the first ballot. They, they go to uh, the extremes to satisfy the military and overseas oh, yeah. voters. When's the deadline for you to get all the ballots printed? You know. Well, uh, looking at the calendar next week, middle of next week, first part of next week, our ballots drop dead are going to the printer. <coughs> so. uh, I wondered, Alan, if you would maybe pass that agreement by Bushu. Mm -hmm. If they're send that on they're the be better. Okay, can you just send this down? This agreement, that yeah. one, all of them. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's pass that yeah. by them. <coughs> right, and Jeff. And that's all I have. I just slowly uh, yeah. for trying to redeem myself. Nothing else from any board members. I, I, I would like to entertain a. Uh, a motion to go into closed session to discuss appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of public body. I know I didn't that up, but is there a second? A second. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. We'll go into executive session, closed session. Is there going to be any? When there's no action, no, no action coming out. Yeah, you can't have any action. Alan, you were oh, okay. yeah, we're back finish in. up the meeting, and then I'll get with you. I'll look at the calendar check for that. That's fine. We're back in open session. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. You seconded that? No, please. Yeah. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same, same. All right, we're done. Yeah, I'll try to dovetail it.